something that God does every year. At the dawn of the new year, the, God, the Lord gives us a theme, a message. And the message that God gave us, gave us this year was called the year of greater things. And I promised you that I would speak on it. I would kind of expound on it and give you some principles that we will not just rest in the prophetic alone, but we will have a base, a foundation from the word of God on some of those things that we are desiring to adhere to, to hold on to the rest of the CM. So I promised you I will do justice to that thought. Well, last week we couldn't because there was such a move that, that some of our plans had to be re rearranged, but that's okay. God had his better plan. So let me just go to this truth, the year of greater things. Now, when you look at the word greater, there are two words in the Greek that talks about greater in the New Testament. One is the word might zone. The other one is kraton. Might zone and kraton. These are two words used for greater in the New Testament. Might zone means something great in quantity. But kraton means something great in quality. So we have two words. I'll try to bring them in context as we progress with the preaching. Now, you know, if you look at the life of a Jew in the time of Jesus, I want everybody to give you attention as we are laying a foundation here. There were few statements of Jesus that drove them to such anger. It provoked such emotional feelings of resentment in the hearts of the listeners. Every time Jesus, every time Jesus said those words, it would get them. Every time. Invariably, any time Jesus spoke those words, these people will go mad. To a point, some of the times, they would take stones to stone him. It happens. It happened almost all the time. One such statement of Jesus was this. When, whenever he said, I and my father are one, they, they could not understand or they could, they could not even comprehend. It was not just anger. It was emotional anger. For them it was blasphemy of the highest order. That they could not accept it. And one of the reasons that they even wanted to crucify him. Was because he made himself equal to the father. But there's another thing that made them so angry. And that's whenever Jesus spoke about greater it made them so angry I'll give you two examples from the Bible can you read John chapter 4 verse 12 look at the statements the way it is structured John chapter 4 verse 12 are thou greater than our father Jacob they could not get around that word greater can we also read John chapter 8 verse 53 John 8 53 Are thou greater than a father Abraham? Why did this make them so angry? Now let me give you the reason For a Jewish man Especially living in the time of Jesus The word of God and the supernatural had become so sparingly less It had dried up there was nothing happening. So in order to identify themselves with something that is beyond their own circumstance or situation, they would go back into history and, and make reference of some mighty move of God or some character in the Old Testament, in the history. And, and, and they saw that this man or this event was the greatest event and somehow because there was no repetition of that event they, they, they created a, a, a boundary and made that a hollow ground you know what I'm trying to say they made it such sacred experience that, that, that's a mountain that's so high that you, nobody could climb it became an uh, it became a holy terrain that nobody should intrude. When they talked about Abraham, he was the greatest for them. 
When they talked about Solomon, when it came to his glory, there was nothing that could beat the, 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 the splendor of Solomon. You know, the Jewish rabbis and the Jewish fathers used to make poems about the display of Solomon's splendor. Because for them, it was the ultimate so that was a hollow ground. You know, because nothing was happening now, they tried to make a hollow ground around this, this character, this experience of this mighty man, even some of the events of miracles in the past. And here comes a man into the scene of history and says, Greater, Amen. greater am I than Abraham. You know, Jesus spoke that over and over and over again. He said, greater than Jonah, greater than Solomon, greater than Abraham, greater than Jacob. The book of Hebrews is all about that greater. When the Jewish people were trying to protect the events, what they call the solemn events of the past, with a superlative protection, Jesus was willing to crisscross that event and transcend it and say, something greater is happening now. Come on, can I get agreement here? Something greater is happening. The book of Hebrews is all about that. He is greater than the prophets. He is greater than the high priest. He is greater than the Levite system. He is greater than Aaron. He is greater than Joshua. He is greater than the tabernacle. He is greater than the sacrifice. He is greater than the priesthood. He is greater. And let me tell you, we serve a greater king, a greater Lord, and a greater Savior. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. So the very fact that the word greater was used, to them it was used, they felt at least to them that Jesus was using it flippantly without understanding the consequence of such a terminology. But Jesus knew exactly what he was saying. Why is it happening? Don't you think that's exactly what's happening today? Even in our churches, Sometimes we bring some heroes, as we call them of faith. Somebody who lived in 18th century or 19th century or 16th century. And somehow we, we have a way of, 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 of making them so sacred and, and idolizing them, if you will. That these were the people, and, 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 and when we talk about them, whether it's miracles or the missionary fears of these people, we tend to have this feeling of there was something extraordinary and the only thing that we can get from them is inspiration to look up to them and probably one day have them as an example. But that's where the church made a mistake because God is not just the God of great things of the past. He's a God of greater things today and that's something we should never forget. Or oh, can I get a witness somewhere here? I want to declare that as loud as I can. As much as some of the great men in the past were powerful men and miracles happened in their lives and God used them for many, many tasks. I don't believe in idolizing them because I believe in the days to come. Write it down. Take it down. Believe it. In the days to come, the land of Canada, the nations of the world, he's going to see a greater move, a greater move that was never seen before. If you believe that, Come on. Hey, hey, can I get a witness somewhere here? God says some of your children are going to do greater things. God says some of these young men that were ready to get baptized, they're going to do greater things. Some of these people are seated here, they're going to do greater things. In the last days, the move of God is not going to dwindle down, it's only going to increase from glory to glory. I believe that. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Let's not make the mistake the Jewish people made. Some of idolizing the past. Some of glamorizing the past events. Some of talking about what happened only in the past and refusing to believe. You know what? Look at the silliness of these people. Look at the very, very incredulity of these people. They stand before the one who did who was the source of all these miracles. And they're asking him, can you beat our father Abraham? <laughs> but I thank God, there's one man in the Bible, when Jesus said greater, 
He did not stone. He didn't try to stone Jesus. And I pray if I can see such people here today. I'm looking. I'm looking. There was one man in the Bible. Most of the time when Jesus said greater, somebody will take a stone. There was one man in the Bible. When Jesus said greater, he stood there. And he was from India. <laughs> oh, no, 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 stone me now. <laughs> I've got a few more preachings to do here. Amen. Now let's see who is that man. The moment Jesus said greater, he didn't react or he didn't you know, do anything. But there was a sense of it could be true. Let's see who that man is. From the book of John, chapter, John chapter 1. And verse number, verse number 50 and 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. You know what? When Jesus looked at that man and said, I saw you under the fig tree, it was a prophetic utterance that almost made him, wow. He stood there spellbound. He stood there stunned. And as he's standing there, my goodness, this man not only tells me my story, my character, he tells me where I was sitting. So he's almost overwhelmed and he doesn't know how to react to this, 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 this prophetic word that came out of the blue. Jesus looks at him and says, Thou shalt see. Can I get somebody in this church today who will not get intimidated when they hear the word greater? Come on. Can I get somebody who will not get infuriated when they hear the word greater? Because the God that we serve is a God of greater things. A God of greater moves. A God of greater anointing. If you believe that, shout an agreement. Amen. That's my God. And this is what he says the next word. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open. You know what Jesus said? You are going to be transported from just the prophetic into the supernatural. Can I say this before? Because I'm almost, I'm feeling I should say this. Our church and many of you have been hearing prophetic word over and over again. And some of you have come to a place, God, I've heard it enough. Now, what, what, what's going to happen with this prophetic word? Now, this is the answer for those of you who are at least inquiring this in your heart. God is speaking to you. You heard, now you are going to see. Can I get somebody to believe this today? You are going to see some things. You are going to see the supernatural. You are going to see my manifestation. You are going to see my power. Not just a prophetic word. You are going to see God in action. You are going to see the angelic visitation. You are going to see the heavens open. You are going to see not just the prophetic, but also the manifestation of the supernatural. Write it down if you would like to. This year, some of you you have heard the prophetic are going to see the fulfillment of the prophetic in the name of Jesus. I declare this in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But here is another word that I want you to understand. You know, God wants to do greater things, not just the past. You know, I don't don't get me wrong, I'm going to you know, you know, to take you to a place where even the best thing that happened in your life, God says you have been talking about over and over again. You don't even have a fresh story to speak anymore. Don't look at your neighbor now. You talk about that beautiful thing that happened. You know, you, you talk about a lot of good things that God did. You know, this is one of my greatest prayers. Every time I stand to preach, I don't want to dig into two years back. In order to find a story. Because that means since that move, since that day, God has taken a retirement. I still believe he's still on the throne. I still believe he's working now. 
You know, there was a great preacher, I don't know his name, he used to ask this question always. What is God doing in your life now? Don't tell me what God did in your life 50 years back. What is he doing now? How many of you can beautifully receive this word with the joy on your face? My God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's a God of enough. He's a God of today. He's a God who can do things today. Can I get a witness somewhere here? He's a God. You have been saying the same story. Come on. You need a new story. You know, I have had some fascinating, fascinating experiences in my travels. Some of you know some of them. And a few people have told me, Pastor, you should start writing it down. Some of the stories. I want to write a book called Anison's Journey. <laughs> you know, I've traveled in, in some extraordinary situations, like without documents, I've traveled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of things have happened. A lot of things in my travel. But I remember one event. You know, if you are traveling by a Canada after a while, you get this elite and super elite status. You become one of their club members. But I've seen they will give you a certain coupon in order to upgrade from your economy to your business class. And only with a coupon. And, and these people are very stingy in that sense. They give you only four coupons a year. That's called the, the what do you call the, the slip? It's, it's more like a brown one. They'll give only four. And I use that up. And, and in Air Canada, it never happens that they will up, upgrade you with, uh, without a, a coupon, that, that receipt. What do you call that? Upgrade certificate. But I said to God, God, could you do a miracle in my life that Air Canada would look at me and say, yes, you don't have the coupon. In fact, I had one coupon. Um, we are not going to use that certificate, but we are going to put you in the business class anyway for another reason. I said, God, that will be interesting. Because for Air Canada, if that happens with Air Canada, I call it a miracle. <laughs> and there I go stand with, I, I gave this, the slip, uh, to the, the certificate to the, to the lady at the counter. She takes it and says, sir, we are giving it back to you. You can use it next time. But we have decided to upgrade you anyways. I said, why? You know, the problem is, we found that the, the balance of our aircraft requires that you need to move. <laughs> Come on, hallelujah. I've seen some strange things, brothers and sisters. And, and, and recently, my travel through the Hurricane Irene in New York, taking a car, which was a stupid idea, taking a car from New York right in the middle of the hurricane and trying to escape the hurricane, flee from New York into Canada. And I was trapped. You know, but God, how few minutes. I've told you this, some of the stories. And then one fine evening going to the airport to board my flight and then realize all my documents have disappeared. I've lost them. Huh. I still remember God gave me such a peace. I called my wife and said, you know what? I started laughing. She said, what's wrong? Why are you so excited? I said, I think God is asking me to start a ministry in the United States of America. <laughs> <laughs> to stay back. No documents. But lo and behold, after two days, the entire documents comes back. I lost it on the street. I've seen. But one, when that was happening, somebody told me, I wish you have got more experiences. I said, no. <laughs> Just like Andre saying, I don't want the repetition of that. Yes, it's a beautiful story. <laughs> but I don't want people knocking at my door the next day. You know, it's true. We all have some stories to say. But I want you to understand this. God says you have been saying the same story again and again. When God spoke to you last time. When God ministered to you last time. When God protected you last time. Take it this year. You are going to have a new. Can I get a witness here? A new story to speak. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. A new story to speak. I want to bring two passages in the light of this particular truth. Two passages from the Bible. Number one, I want you to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 18. Isaiah 43 verse number 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. I like the next word. 
Next word, please. Behold, that means look. Anytime you see the word behold, look. Look, I will do a new thing. This is a prophetic word for somebody. You know what it means? It means two things. It at least could mean two things. One, some of you are so caught up in the pain of the past. God says, forget it. Don't even consider that. I'm about to do something. Oh, you have got a story of pain to say. You have got a story of defeat to speak about. You have got a story of failure to address. But God says, behold, this year, I'm going to do something new. It not only just means that. If you read this scripture and the b- background of it along with another scripture, Jeremiah 23, 7. You know what he's talking about. Jeremiah 23, 7. Therefore, be- behold, the days will come, says the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord leaveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. You know what? Even after 1500 or 1000 years later, they have only one story to say, God brought his people from Egypt. That's the old story, brother. God says, This is time. I'm going to do something new. Can I get somebody to receive it in the name of Jesus? Something new. This is going to be prophetic. I want you to latch on to it. Something new. Something new. You're not going to dwell on the old story of a miracle. God says what I'm about to do will be a better miracle. A greater miracle. A stronger miracle. Can somebody shout a hallelujah? I'm about to do something more powerful. Let the church get ready for it. Let people get ready for it. Let our ministers get ready for it. Let our pastors get ready for it. For God is about to do something bigger. Something greater. That will make the old story pain in comparison. Oh, come on. Because there's no limit to his power. What is he planning to do? Isaiah 43, 18. What is he planning to do? If you can receive it, just receive it by faith. Verse number 18. Behold, I will do a new thing. Next verse. It shall spring now. It shall spring forth. The word is now. You don't have to dig into the past to get a story. Now. This month. In the next few days. This year. God is about to do something new and more powerful. Something new. And this is what he says. Shall he not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and river in the desert. You know what? The first miracle of God bringing his people through Red Sea, he blocked a river or he divided a sea. But he says, I'm now opening a sea. A river. The first miracle was a deliverance. How many of you know blocking or dividing the Red Sea can only happen once? It needs to happen only once. As much as spectacular, you don't expect every day for the Red Sea to be divided. But God says these people are living in the wilderness. What they need today is a, is a river which should be there today, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, every minute they need to be able to see it. God says, I'm going to do a miracle, not a one-time miracle, but a miracle which will be there. Not a one-time miracle. Not a one-time miracle. When you get up in the morning, the miracle will be there. When you get up next day, the miracle will be there. When you get up next month, the miracle will be there. How many of you can say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. A miracle of God that's going to keep you, keep accompanying you from day to day to tomorrow to the next year. I'm talking about a sustaining miracle. I'm talking about a remaining miracle. 
that God is about to do. Some of you who in this place can witness today, God, the reason I'm here is because you open a red sea in my life. Can I see your hands? I, you open a door for me. You open the red sea for me. When the enemy said he will not let me go forward, you are the one who opened the way in the midst of the red sea. But God, I am now in a wilderness. I need to see another miracle. Can somebody receive it? In the name of Jesus, I need to see another miracle. A miracle that will be there every time I see it. A miracle that will be there every moment I wake up. A miracle that will be there the every, every hour of my day. I can see the hand of God. This is a prophetic word that God is speaking to somebody. In spite of some great things that happened in your life in the past, some of you are still going through a wilderness a wilderness where you don't even know a miracle is happening where you can't even see the hand of God anymore but God says take it as a promise from the Lord in the next few days some of you are going to see him. the miracle that, that happened in the past was a one time miracle but what is going to happen now will stay with you day and night it's going to accompany you no powers of darkness can stop it if you believe that would you give the Lord a shout offering a praise offering in the name of Jesus behold I'm going to do it now oh some of you talk about the miracle of healing that happened in your life last many years back but God says you're going to walk in the healing some of you talk about the supernatural provision that God gave you some years back but God is prophesying over you this year every moment you're going to walk in it some of you are talking about the anointing that came upon you write it down this year you're going to see greater anointing in the name of Jesus if you believe that come on somebody somebody receive it somebody receive it this is a prophetic word in spite of what God did in your life you need a miracle today yeah. Oof. keep praying keep praying keep praying keep praying something mighty is happening but this is not for people who get kind of bewildered when God says greater kind of infuriated when they hear the word greater but this is for people who say God I've seen great things. But you have the power to do greater things. That's what I believe. And God says, this is a promise. This time, it's not just a one-time breaking of the Red Sea. It's going to be reversed in the wilderness. That means every time, this miracle is going to surround you. In the name of Jesus, do you want a refreshing miracle? If you want a refreshing miracle, lift up your hand and shout a hallelujah. I'm talking about a miracle that's going to refresh your spirit, refresh your heart, refresh your family. <laughs> There's somebody crying out to God today. I need a refreshing touch. Next to us. Because of this, what's going to happen? I want the young people to listen to this. This is a prophetic word for the young people and also anybody who's going to be connected to the ministry of the youth. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. How many of you know? In another place it says it's the ostrich. The wild jackal or fox. How many of you know these are the creatures that will never be tamed? The beast, the dragon, and the owl. Nobody can tame them. They're not domesticated. They're wild. But because of what God is going to do for his people. Hallelujah. Some people that never could come into the house of a Lord and would bow down you will see them fall on their face can I get somebody to believe this I'm speaking about the drug addicts that are going to fall on their face I'm talking about the prostitutes that are going to fall on their face I'm talking about people in this land who will honor God because God is doing a new thing in the church of the Lord hallelujah can somebody receive it in the name of Jesus because of your miracle oh come on 
Huda Rabba Shandala Rabba Shandala Rabba Sia. Because of your miracle, because of what God is going to do new in your life, God says some people that would never step into a church, never would lift up their hands in submission, never would say, I need Jesus. In the days to come, there's going to be a huge army. Oh, come on. There's going to be a huge company of such people that are going to walk into the house of the Lord and declare, I need Jesus. I need, come on. If you want to receive him, this is an anointing on your life right now. God says, because of my new miracle in your life, not just you are going to be blessed, not just you are going to be refreshed, but people who would never be domesticated, never would submit themselves, are going to fall on their face and say, God, he is God. God, he is God. Hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Something mighty is happening. I talk to the young men and the young women in this place in the name of Jesus. This is a word. Some of you have been wondering, God, you did things in the past. At least people say you did it in the past. What about today? What about now? What about a refreshing for my soul? What about the wilderness that I'm going through? God says I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to do a miracle in your wilderness. And because of that, some of the people in your family who would never bow down, some of the people that are related to you who cannot be domesticated, some of the tough nuts to crack, some of the loose guys on the street, some of the guys who sit on your face, get away from me because you talk about God. Those same people, If you won't receive this prophetic word, would you come on, do something? Do something to receive it in the name of Jesus. God says it's a prophetic word over your life. I'm gonna refresh your soul and will refresh your family. And because of that, people on the streets, people in your family are going to join you in worshiping God. If you believe that, give the Lord. Oh, get ready, get this ready, get the hour of greater things. This is a moment of greater things in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on. You have seen some great things in your life, it's true. But God says, I'm going to show you greater things. Amen. Don't have to talk about what happened a few dozen years back. When God opened the Red Sea for you, it's beautiful. God said, I'm going to make you give a testimony. You're going to say, today, today, I saw his power. He refreshed me. He opened a river in the wilderness. I came in the house of God dried, but now I'm feeling refreshed. Something is happening. There's a refreshing happening in my life. God says because of that miracle, some of the people that you could not even comprehend that are going to come into the house of the Lord, are going to serve the Lord, they are going to join with you. Even before you invite them, they're going to tell you, can we come with you to worship the Lord? Can we join with you to worship the Lord? I'm talking about a miracle in the name of Jesus this oh come on get ready get ready get ready some of the things over which you said impossible God said possible oh hallelujah 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 keep praying keep praying something mighty is happening there's something beautiful happening in this room today keep looking behold I'm doing something Hallelujah. I'm talking about a great anointing. I'm talking about a greater ministry. I'm talking about a greater healing. I'm talking about a greater revelation. I'm talking about a greater supernatural. I'm talking about a greater provision. I'm talking about a greater protection in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about a greater growth in the name of the Lord. Get ready. The Lord that I serve is a God able. Able. He is greater than Abraham, greater than Moses, greater than the prophets in the Old Testament. He can do greater things. 
Keep praying, keep praying. Something mighty is happening in the name of Jesus. Keep praying, brothers and sisters. God is about to do something new, something greater, something beautiful. Nathaniel, you saw how Jesus could interpret or even reveal your story. That's powerful. That's great. You're stunned. You're overcome with such a revelation. But God says, just hang in there. Hold on. I'm about to do greater things. You will see it. Can I say this with great humility in my heart? Many of you, or I should say all of us, many of us, who are here today is only because of the great things. I'm not despising or discounting the Red Sea being divided. That is what brought you out. But for some years you have got only one story to say. God says that's not good enough. I want to do something. But that's not just some time in the future. Because everything you talk about God's move, it's in the vague. It's a vague past and a vague future. God says I'm going to make it more concrete. You're going to move from the abstract to the concrete. It's not a vague future. God says keep your eyes open. Keep seeing. Because it's going to happen sooner. Sooner than you can think. Sooner than you can imagine. In the name of Jesus. I'm about to do something new in your life. Something greater in your life. If you believe that. Shout hallelujah. I'm about to pray. I want you to receive this promise. In the name of Jesus. Every person praying today. I only come to the introduction of a message. God willing next week I'll go into the further ends of my message. That's okay. God is speaking. you are. Just pray a prayer. God. I have seen great things. But I believe this year will be the greater things. Because the Bible says, no eyes have seen. No ears have heard. No man can fathom what the Lord can do. The moment you draw a boundary around the past, move of God and make that a hallowed ground to a point where you say, that's it. This cannot be overcome or prevailed upon. That's a mistake. God says, just wait. Because everything that I do, you know what's the meaning of the word? That I said the first word. It means the grade of glory. You had one grade of glory. I'm going to put another grade of glory. And when that happens, you can take this as a promise. Your life is going to become the signboard that will tell people God is alive. And the Bible says, a wild beast is going to honor me because of your life. Some wild beast in the land of Canada, they're going to honor the name of the Lord. There's going to be a move among the wild beasts. Some of the people about whom you said this man don't, I don't think he'll ever get saved. God said, don't you dare say that. Because one of these days he's going to say, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. I'm talking a prophetic word over your life. Can I ask everybody to stand up, please? Please, all of you to stand up. Can you receive this? You know, sometimes we have this fear. Every time God has to do something greater, we may have to go through some greater trouble. That's not the truth. That's not the case. God can do greater things even without you going through trouble. Yes, there are times he allows you to go through a situation which might look like a trouble and he will give you glory. That's possible. But sometimes he does it because you have a need. Simple as that. You have a need. Sometimes he does it because somebody else related to you has a need. And you become just a conduit, a channel of that miracle. Sometimes he does it because the enemy is trying to destroy some work of God in your life. 
and God will do some great things all of a sudden to destroy the power of evil. Come on, hallelujah. Can you receive it in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Something greater is going to happen this year. So can you declare as loud, wherever you are, you can use all the expressions of faith and say, I believe greater things are going to be seen. Greater things are going to be seen in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, hallelujah. If you believe that, declare it wherever you are. Praise the name of the Lord as loud as you can. Make a joyful noise in the house of the Lord. For the Lord is about to do something greater. If you find somebody who, who's a believer like you, who's not offended when you say the greater word, please tell that person, I'm going to see some greater things. Come on. If you see somebody around you who's not offended by the word greater, tell them, tell them, I'm going to see some greater things of God in the days to come. In the name of Jesus. It's not over yet. It's not done with me yet. I'm going to see some greater things in the name of Jesus. Remember not either former things. Don't dwell, whether it be sorrow or victory. Don't you dwell in the past. Behold, I'm going to do something. You know, I see a beautiful vision. With this, with this I'm going to stop. And the brother who spoke to me, I, I would try to incorporate that next week because... You know, it, 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 there's something going to happen next week as well. But I want to say this. I see a vision. The moment the people of God said greater. You know what you were doing? You were opening up your life to tap into what is unlimited. Yes. Oh, you didn't hear that. You are opening up your life, your family, your ministry to tap into something that is unlimited. Come on, hallelujah. If you believe that, receive it in the name of Jesus. An unlimited power, unlimited resource, unlimited miracle, unlimited healing, unlimited salvation, unlimited move of the Holy Ghost. Oh. Come on, somebody shout a hallelujah. Unlimited. Because everything that you see in your life is, get, is it's getting exhausted. Energy, strength, healing, all that you have is getting exhausted. But God says, I'm about to do something. If you say greater. 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 Where you will see that my power is only increasing. My glory is only increasing. This all surpassing power of God is only increasing. From glory to glory. Come on. It's only increasing. We serve a greater God. Hallelujah. You know with this one verse let me pray and close. Because this is God speaking to his people. You know this is the word. You know when God does that the beast of the field shall honor me. And the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people have I formed for myself. Hallelujah. You know what they're going to do when this happens? Can we try that today? They shall show forth my praise. It's not just a silent praise. It's a conspicuous praise. You're showing off your praise. Come on, hallelujah. You are declaring this praise in the name of Jesus. Somebody shh. Somebody show off that praise. The praise of faith. The praise that says to you something mighty is going to happen in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. If you want to join hands, somebody can do that. Lord, let's pray in the name of Jesus. Beautiful. Do you want to move into the greater? Or do you want to get saturated with things, even the best things of the past? Are you like the people at the time of Jesus? Anytime Jesus said greater, that, that made them nervous. They would take stones. 
But are you like Nathaniel? The moment God said greater, I believe he stood there with a smile. Let me see it. Come on, can I get somebody? Father, I believe in the name of Jesus. We are going to see greater things in our families. Greater miracles. Greater healings. Greater consistent miracles in the name of Jesus. Greater power release. Greater revival. Greater move of God. Greater provision. Greater growth. Greater anointing. Greater salvation. Greater number of people that are going to get baptized in the days to come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! As your people, by faith, we are going to tap into the unlimited by just saying, Greater. We thank you it's been done. Lord, this is a beautiful Sunday. But it's not over. Next week we will continue to hear from you. You have got some principles to teach us. We thank you it's been done. In Jesus' precious name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen.